biggest thing that I've learned is whatever path you think you want isn't necessarily going to be the best path for you. And it's not going to be the path that you end up going. Like, for instance, I wanted to be a CFI at the school that I was at and go, you know, through my hours and so forth. So Dave, thank you very much for making some time to come here on the Fly with Trent show and share with uh, my audience of Career 2.0 pilots a little bit about your experience as a Career 2.0 pilot. So let's start with just very briefly, um, how old are you now and when did you get your commercial license? I'm 48 now and I got my commercial license uh, in early 2021. Okay. And so what you, like most people, you probably had somewhere between 250 and 300 hours when you got the commercial license. Commercial, because it was through part 141, I had a little bit less than that. Um, I had about 220 hours when I had, when I got all the way through my MEI. Okay. And you have how many hours now? Uh, about 890. Okay. So today you're working for i think you said a part 135 to just tell us a little bit what you what you're flying right now and then we're going to kind of unpack how did you get from when you were a newly minted commercial pilot through to where you are now yeah so now i i fly a cj3 plus so it's a it's a light uh, uh private jet cessna out of love field the company also has a couple of citation 10 or 10 and a 10 plus but i fly the the cj3 plus Okay. And about how many hours a week or per month are you getting? And you're second in command, right? Yeah. Um, the way this company works is uh, eventually it'll be just back and forth. We'll be swapping off. So I won't be, I'm not just sitting right seat and just doing the radios only. I'll be flying half, you know, half the time eventually. I literally just started with them. So uh, I've flown one flight um, with them uh, in their plane. So it, it took me a while to get through the type training and all that stuff. And so my next flight isn't for another week or so. So um, there, the the plane was actually shut down for a little while because the um, the previous second command ended up um, leaving and they were already kind of shorthanded looking for somebody. And so anyway, so waiting for me to get type rated and everything, the, the plane was basically grounded because they only had one person to fly it um, for mm -hmm. about two months. So then obviously there was a slow there. So now they got to build build that back up. So. It'll take a little bit before okay. I get really rolling. And you're a full-time employee of this part 135? Yeah. So does that mean you get a salary regardless of how often you fly, or are you only compensated when you fly? This operator, I have a guaranteed amount of days worth of flying that I, I get. And then uh, obviously once I go beyond that, then I get paid the additional on top of that. So I'm guaranteed basically okay. 10 flight days a month. Uh, whether I fly or not, and then after that, not. yeah, yep. Okay, and and how did you find and apply and and actually get this job? Honestly, I'm not sure which one it went through because I was applying both through LinkedIn and through um, BizJet Jobs. Um, I think they found it through BizJet Jobs, but they just responded responded to me and said, "Hey, we found your resume," and um, it went on from there. Okay, and how many hours did you have when you applied? With them, I think I had about 850 or 860. Okay. Is your, so we're going to go forwards a little bit and then we're going to go backwards. So are okay. you doing this, or is your goal to get to 1500 and get to the airlines or do you have a different goal than that? I, I definitely want to get to the airlines eventually. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to go or as soon as I hit 1500 hours. I kind of want to see how it goes. I really have a good feeling about this operator. It's really close to my home. They're home almost the, almost every night. So as a part mm -hmm. 135 operation, that's pretty rare. Um, so, and then they also have the, the bigger jets that I have the opportunity to fly also. So um, I for sure I'm giving, giving them a year, see how many hours they get and that kind of thing. And then um, most likely I'm figuring out probably won't be quite to 1500 after a year. So I'll probably end up giving them another year. Um, at least, you know, we'll see how it goes from there. But if everything it goes is, is I feel it's going to go and they say it's going to go. Um, they want me to be a captain as soon as I hit 1500 hours. So as soon as I hit 1500 hours, they'll send me to, to get that in my ATP done. 
and then I'll uh, probably stay with them for at least another year at that point is my guess. Uh, so I can hopefully get, you know, as much as 500 hours of PIC time uh, mm -hmm. and then maybe be able to skip a regional and go right to a, 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 a major major. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Legacy um, sort of so thing. somebody I interviewed, somebody I interviewed just uh, the other day, he, and now I've gosh, gosh darn it. I went and lost my train of thought. Hopefully it'll come back to me. So if it does, uh, I'll revisit that point. I was going to make my watch. Uh, I've got a student doing a cross country solo, literally as we're recording this. And that was the <laughs> timer going off about when he's supposed to be landing and texting me. So I got distracted in the middle of my <laughs> sentence and he hasn't texted okay. me yet. So I should be texting him soon. In any case, what I want to deliver for the audience is how did you get, um, oh, I got the idea. I got the thought back. Thank you. Okay. What this guy did that I thought was particularly clever was he had on his own dime, they, they split the cost of the type rating on the first jet and he's a contract mm -hmm. pilot, not an employee. He then went in out of his own dime and got typed on two more aircraft. So he's the only guy in their stable of pilots who's typed on all of their jets and he's just trying, I'm now I now I turn down flights. He says, I they want me to fly everything all the time. So it was an absolutely phenomenal investment for me to do to make in myself. So I share that with you only and the audience because I thought it was a great idea. And uh, you mentioned they got more than one jet, so maybe that's something that you might want to consider. All right. With that said, um talk to us a little bit about like what did you what was your path like? to go from newly minted commercial pilot to a guy with 800 and some odd hours who just got hired to fly, you know, right seat in a jet. What, I know it was a bit of CFI work, but not all CFI work. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah. So um, I tried to apply at the school I went to as a pretty large school in DFW. Um, and then they have both really a light sport jet or, light sport um, propeller planes and they also have like 172s and pipers and uh, they ended up not hiring me because anyway I can't I was too heavy to fly the light sport um, in there and they they had another applicant that could fly everything so that obviously was a little more flexible for them so anyway so I ended up going to a really small um, flight school that had one plane it was an older 172 first plane I actually flew that was all steam gauges um, so did that for uh, only a couple months. The plane wasn't that greatly maintained, and and so I was having some struggles there. And so I found an opportunity at um, back at uh, Addison, where I did my flight training at, and to do. They had two planes, uh, plus they also had a two single engine planes. Then they also had an Aztec at the time, uh, and I really wanted to get some multi engine time, and I was going to be their only MEI. So um, I started there. Uh, and then unfortunately they got in a disagreement and they got rid of the Aztec. So I was back to single engine stuff, but you know, I did some hours there, uh, wasn't getting a ton of hours, um, but it was fairly consistent. And then, uh, I had a mentor that, um, had recommended that I do a, um, everybody calls it a right seater program, but it's called supporting crew member at CAE, which is where you would go to get type rated in a lot of different jets. And so you sit, you go through all the training with that, uh, as you would as if you're getting a, a type rating, you just don't take the check ride. And then you come back and you do a bunch of sessions of people going through their initial training or recurrent trainings, check rides, things like that. And you're sitting in the right seat, doing all the emergencies, working through the um, check checklist and stuff with them. Once you get so many uh, sim sessions done, then you actually go back through all the training again and get type rated in the jet. So now you've you know got a nice type rating and then you can and some experience in the plane. And, and I actually had about five different job offers while I was doing that program. Um, but my hours were just too low uh, for most of them, except for one um, that they had a mentor program. And so and that was a company called Jetit that is no longer in around. Um, but I got hired there and got some hours there. And so that was my first jet job. And that was for the Phenom 300. Okay. And so CAE, for those who aren't familiar with it, um, it sounds like it's a place where people, it's like flight training where you can go and get all your type ratings. Yeah. So that it's just very similar. There's another company called flight safety, uh, international. Flight safety, it's, that's um, what I meant. Yeah. So it's just like flight safety, um, CAE. They also, I think they used to be called simu flight. Um, so they, okay. they use their, that building has like 20 or more 
simulators that are when you get in it it's exactly like the cockpit and the views yeah. are, are digital but look very you know they're a, a, as good of a simulator as you can get yep and where is that located uh just next to dfw airport okay so that was where you racked up the bulk of your time and that was your last job before this one is that right uh well cae and then i went to um jet it and I was there for six months until they okay. went out, went under. And then, then I did some uh, uh, contract flying in Phenoms um, for three or four months. And then uh, decided I wanted to get back into a Part 135 and found one that seemed to be a really good fit at Left Field. Okay. Oh, there's my student. He just landed and he taxied back. So half of his cross country, nice. his first cross country solo was done and he's still alive and breathing. I'm I'm a, I'm a little bit more relaxed now. I was a little stressed there for a minute. I can imagine. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to th I, that those are the questions that I wanted to ask you. I just, you know, I get a lot of requests from my audience to share the stories of other career 2.0 pilots who maybe aren't doing the exact, you know, CFI Air, regional airline path or doing something a little bit differently, which it appears that you have done. So is before we sign off, is there anything else that you would want to, you know, sort of give advice now that you've been at this for a while to somebody who's back at 250 or 300 hours and, and they're kind of thinking like, well, what should I do? What are my options? Is there anything else that you want to add before we conclude today? Sure. Um, the biggest thing that I've learned is whatever path you think you want isn't necessarily going to be the best path for you. And it's not going to be the path that you end up going. Like for instance, I wanted to be a CFI at the school that I was at and go, you know, through my hours and so forth. I didn't get it. I was devastated and, you know, decided, you know, I, this is not going to be anything that I'm going to fail at. So I just kept working and found a small place and worked my way through there. I have not gotten a few jobs that I've applied for. And each time that I didn't get a job that I applied for, I ended up having a better opportunity come my way um, because, whether it's because of that or in lieu of it or what have you. So just, you know, there's so many ways to get where you end up wanting to go and where you think you want to go may not be exactly where you want to go. Mm -hmm. um, so just all I would always say is take every opportunity you can um, be as positive as you can. Do not give up. If it's what you really want to do, don't take no for an answer. Just find another way to get there. Um, the right seat programs, uh, both flight safety and CAE and there's other I'm sure there's others out there I think are fantastic I've had many people say that if you have that something like that on your on your resume it's pretty much a guaranteed interview when it comes to a crew situation whether it's a part 135 or 121 um, and you can get into those programs usually with three or four hundred hours you just have to be decent at instrument flying because you're going to be shooting lots of approaches and holds and that kind of thing and using you know high-end avionics but um, so, yeah, and also, I, like I said before, I've gotten multiple jobs offers from that. So, and that's exactly what the program is there for is to get you typed and then get you job offers and, and go on. So, just don't give up and don't, uh, don't pick, don't feel like you have to go only one direction. All right. Terrific. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you have questions for Dave, make sure you leave those right down in the comments and I will make sure that I ping Dave to answer those questions right on the YouTubes. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please do give it a thumbs up so the algorithm knows to show it to some other people. And if this is your first time watching one of my videos and you'd like to see other interviews like this, there are more on my channel. And if you want to receive notifications of additional interviews, you can subscribe and click the bell here on YouTube, or you can head on over to flywithtrent.com and become an email subscriber. And then you'll get an email notification uh, each time that I publish a full length video like this. Um, and interviews aren't the only type of full length video that I do, but they are definitely one of the type that I know that my audience really loves. So thanks very much for watching. Dave, thank you very much for being here. It's been a pleasure. And yep. uh, I want to uh, just to, on behalf of the audience again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.